Hej. 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 Low. Me. You. We. We. Hi. Fred Penner is my name. I am a singer. I have been doing what I do, standing on a stage, sharing my thoughts and feelings and music with, with, uh, with a generation, and you seem to have all grown up quite nicely. I'm, I'm happy to see that. This has been my life for 40, 40 plus years. I can't believe it. This is what I do. I travel around the world sharing songs and stories and thoughts and feelings, and for the next 18 minutes, that's right, the clock is ticking. For the next 18 minutes, I am going to try and give you some kind of perspective of where I come from, the influences that have been part of my life that ultimately will hopefully share some light on the, the mighty question, what is the future of children? It's a big question. It's a difficult question. It's a challenging question. Children are uh, sponges. It's a fact. Children are sponges because they observe and imitate the things around them. They are vulnerable. They're susceptible to everything that happens around them. So that's why it's all the more essential that we as the caregivers, as the parents, bring positive energy to those children. That's, that's the, the, the bottom line for me. Uh, so that ultimately they do grow into positive adults. It's a, it's a pretty clear process, I think, where, where you start with this beautiful, vulner, vulner, vulnerable child, baby, nurture until they grow up, hopefully to be, as I said, positive children. My positivity comes from the arts. I love making music. I love sharing my thoughts and feelings. I've gotten... I've gotten pretty good at it over the years, actually. And it seems to have been received positively by, by you, by that generation. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask any parent or grandparent about their children, they will tell you that children are, um, are essentially born into the arts. They will, will create drama, they'll create music, they'll create rhythm. They will discover things naturally around them that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that give them some sense of accomplishment and help define themselves. They learn how to play, they learn how to learn. Learn how to learn. That's an interesting concept. Uh, they learn how to communicate, they learn how to celebrate. Uh, defining themselves. Identity is is one of those phrases that, that keeps coming back in my mind. What is the identity of a child? And how do they fit in with the arts? It's something that, that confuses me a little bit is the arts have been thousands of studies, perhaps not thousands, but hundreds at least, studies have been done of the value of arts in the life of a child. That's, that's not a matter of opinion. That is a fact. I know that's a fact. I've seen that in action. So why is it that whenever... A cut is going to happen in a school system. They look at cutting the arts. That, that confuses me. So if you are involved in, in school systems, if you are moving into that world, please keep that as a perspective. The arts is, is valuable in so many directions. It helps the child's, well, the child's identity. When I do performances, I'm always thinking about, about where the kids are and, and what, they're, what they're thinking. And, and I want them to all, as I want you to all be part of this process today, I have questions for you. What planet are we on? Are you sure about that? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Okay, Earth it is. What continent are we on? Good. This is a, a lesson. You can respond. Don't worry. North America, yes. What country are we in? America. What province? Alberta. What city? Edmonton. What is your name? What is your favorite color? <laughs> what is your quest? <laughs> I seek the Holy Grail. <laughs> ah, a couple of Monty Python fans, good. 
my quest in this life, as I mentioned earlier, is to discover music, is to reach inside of myself into that vulnerable part of my being, find songs, find patterns, and bring them forward to my audience. A child's quest, I believe, is to just discover who they are and how they fit into this world. Children in the first six years of their life, personality is formed. That's another fact, approximately, five to seven, give or take. So in the earliest part of your life, that's when personality is formed. So why, if we know that, <clears throat> then why are not resources really focused in to the essence of the child so that they all, so that they actually have a fighting chance in this world? Um, it comes down to to basic human rights. I mean, when I look to the, to the future of humanity, the future of children, basic rights just is, is it's the fundamental part. I was in uh, Africa a couple of years ago, well, about five years ago, with World Vision. We went to Zambia, to a little village called Colomo, and I met a couple of families. The, the fathers had all disappeared. Any male figure had gone because of HIV AIDS. It was mothers, sometimes even children, caring for children. So when I'm thinking today about the future of children in, in our prosperous North American continent is one thing. Thinking of the future of children in the third world is something completely different. I don't quite know how to, how to balance those, but it, but it does come down to the essence of the child, the essence of, of human rights. And a number of years ago, also, I, uh, I was asked, uh, I was involved with, with, uh, with World Vision and with UNICEF and with UNESCO and, and the United Nations and the basic rights of the child, and I wrote a, a song for UNICEF back then, which sort of encapsulates some of the idea of, of the one child. Often when I'm thinking of how, uh, how anything works, I, I, it's in, it's in possible or difficult to extrapolate to an entire generation, so I think of the one child. So that one child, help me to grow one cup of water, healthy and strong, one piece of bread, help me to read one life of learning, take me along the road ahead. I have a mind, I'm full of questions, I have a voice, I love to sing, give me one day to work and play as a part of everything. So looking at the future, that's essentially what I want to see. I want every child to have that opportunity to discover, to grow, to put the patterns of life, to put the pieces of their world together. When I was a little child, about as old as you, I collected things that I would find and hide them in a shoe. Rocks and shells and bottle caps, a ball of foil or string, they didn't cost a penny, and I felt just like a king. Here's your part. One to five and six to ten, collect your thoughts and start again. One to five and six to ten, collect your thoughts again. I've learned to really look for treasures from around the world. I keep them in a... You're paying attention. <laughs> Stamps and coins and stickers, a story, poem, and song open my imagination to thoughts that make me strong. One to five and six to ten, collect your thoughts and start again. One to five and six to ten, collect your thoughts again. Now I can't show you the collection that means the most to me, because it's hidden deep inside where nobody can see. It comes from those who care for you. This collection has its start in the memories and the feelings and the pictures in your heart. One to five and six to ten, memories that never end. One to five and six to ten, memories never end. Try. 
One to five and six to ten, memories that never end. One to five and six to ten, memories never end. Oh, memories never end. So quite simply, that is what today is about. That is what life is about, is making some memories together. I hope, I know for a fact that the presentations you'll be seeing today will bring thoughts into your mind, will help you discover things inside of you that, that you may not have thought about before, will open up some channels for you. And I'm excited about that. So when I think of the future, it's not just what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about all of the pieces of a life puzzle and finding that one little seed that gets planted that says, I think I can, yeah, I could, sure, I could do that. Finding the confidence to take that seed and move it, move it in another direction. So in my perspective, in order to look to the future, you need to look to the past. I've heard that phrase before, and I think that's true. So my past is filled with music. When I was growing up, my Parents were into the swing era, so lots of Benny Goodman, Tommy Dorsey, all of those, those great driving, driving chords, those good downbeats. I remember my body would be, you know, bopping with that. Um, and my dad was very much into classical music as well. I remember him air conducting orchestras in the living room. He'd stand there, eyes closed, and he'd have this imaginary baton, and he would be conducting. So the music was inside of him. And I, and I remember watching that and thinking, boy, that, that's a pretty powerful emotion to feel that inside of you. Children have the same kind of the same kind of, of, of essence. The music gets inside of them. I had a sister, Susie, and she was a, a Down syndrome child. And I remember as a teenager, she was about 10, 8 years younger than me. So as a, as a young teenager, 6 she was six years old, I was, you know, 14 or so. And I don't know if you've dealt with special needs children, but, but boy, they, they have, they, there's, a, there's a phrase often that is used for, for special needs, and it's called titched. It was sort of a southern U.S. thing. Boy, that boy, he's a my titched, you know what I'm saying? Titched is actually a variation of the word touched, touched by the hand of God. And my awareness as a teenager of watching dear Susie go through her life of appreciating music was, was, was overwhelming. She would ha have special songs that, that she would love to hear. A, a West Side Story was one of her favorites. She would listen to West Side Story and some of those beautiful, sensitive Bernstein tunes, and she would absorb the music inside of her and then flop down and cry and be, be happy and... and, uh, and, and and bright after that, and I thought, my goodness, that's what music can do for a human. It can get inside of you. It can make you feel energized and positive and creative. Um, that led me ultimately to working with special needs children. Years, uh, years after, I worked with, with physically, mentally challenged kids. Music was always part of my interaction with those children. Uh, years later, just uh, actually last week, in fact, um, there was a young, young fellow who was, who was selling ice cream at the Children's Festival in Winnipeg that I performed at, and, and he came up and said, hey, Penner, good to see you. Went over, what's your name again? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember, right, I do remember you from Knowles School for Boys. He was one of the kids that I'd worked with at one of these behavior problem centers in Winnipeg. He remembered me. He remembered the music that I had shared with him, and he said, you made a difference. Oh, that's what it's about. Never underestimate your ability to make a difference in the life of a child. So that's what became the mantra for me as, as my life unfolded. I had no idea where any of this would go. Nobody ever told me that I could be a performer. I was really good at it. I, I was in the operettas and the glee clubs and the choirs all through life, but nobody ever told me that this was what I could do. So as you go back into your lives and your children and your families, tell your kids that this is an option, that we need the creative souls in this world to step forward and to be positive, creative people in this life. 
I don't know, I find that music is, uh, is such a critical part of my world here. I often say things better through, through song than, uh, than speaking, if you know what I mean. How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? How many seas must a white dove say before she sleeps in the sand? Blowing in the wind, the answer is blowing in the wind. So music has touched my soul in so many ways. I am from the 60s, and these tunes, songs like this, were, were so critical because they formed a foundation for me. Appreciation is the bottom line, but an understanding of the world on another level. My sister Susie, as I was saying, is a Down Syndrome child, and I wrote a song for the Down Syndrome Society, which, looking at the future of, of life, of children, sort of encapsulates a lot of my feelings. It's called Celebrate Being, which was the name of the conference. Can you say that? Celebrate Being. Say celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate being a dreamer. Celebrate being real. Celebrate being good, good friends. Telling each other how you feel. Celebrate being happy. Celebrate being proud. Celebrate being effervescent. I've always wanted to use the word effervescent in a song. <laughs> and shouting my name out loud. Shouting your name out loud. Everyone is welcome. We are people first. And there's no denying that we'll keep on trying. It turns out better when we're together. I like your style, cause you make me smile. Celebrate being gentle. Celebrate being kind. Celebrate being love and letting your love light shine. Yeah, celebrate being filled with love. And letting your love light shine. Letting your love light shine. So sometimes in interviews, people will ask me, has your music changed over, over your career of 30, 40 years? I said, well, not really. I still try and write songs and present things that have the human value. I try and write songs about, about positivity, about energy, about love, about, about caring, about, about people, caring for other people. Ultimately, that's what the only message that I can give as far as future is concerned is look inside of yourself. Find the vulnerability of your world. Find the, the positivity in your life and share it with the people around you. It's pretty fundamental, basically. We are all in this together. It's a crazy, crazy world. And what children are being asked to take in and assimilate and, and, and understand and bring into their own world is is overwhelming. Find moments to chill. Help your children find a corner. Like Fred Penner's place, that's what it was all about, is a place where you can chill. Crawl through that log and go, oh, thank goodness I'm here. Thank you.